The scenario plays as follows. You get an email. It may have a valid password, an invalid password, or an old password as part of the subject. The email starts by stating they have an infected adult or other kind of website that has been monitoring you and recorded video of you doing things that you would rather not have others see. They go further by stating that you have to pay a fairly substantial amount in bitcoins within a set number of days or a number of your friends or family will be sent videos. They include a bitcoin address and how to obtain bitcoins online. Does this seem familiar? Wait, my name is Steve Smith. This is TQA Weekly. I'm going to bust this can of stupidity open. So first of all, let's talk about that email and password. How did they get it? Well, any six-year-old can get it. You go on to Google and you can look up breached websites, their databases for their usernames, emails, and passwords. They're going to be really old. You want to know why? Because most modern businesses don't store passwords anymore in plain text. And if they do, they're getting murdered today and going bankrupt tomorrow. A number of countries and even the European Union will sue you out of existence for even being stupid enough to do that. So, if it is a valid password, chances are it's because you use it in multiple places because most websites force you to change the passwords immediately. So that is one reason why you should already be taking with a grain of salt that email because chances are that password's no longer valid. Number two, Microsoft pushed hard to have people use operating systems like Windows 10 that update more often. They concentrate on fewer operating systems and therefore put out updates when needed. They even go out of their way to have out of cycle updates for especially serious problems with the operating systems meaning that you are probably up to date. And if you're in Windows 10, you are up to date, whether you like it or not, and I do like it. Because a patched ecosystem is like a vaccinated set of kids. They're not likely to die from a disease that is completely avoidable. Here's the other thing. Browsers auto update in the background, and they're also sandboxed. Other applications, also use sandboxing to prevent problems from occurring. So malicious code to even get viruses often can't breach the application's walls. They just can't do it. Then of course, there's the fact that most applications in your computer will also update whether by themselves or with notifications from user intervention, which I suggest that you also do the updates as well. You have antivirus and anti-malware software inside of your computer, everybody does. Whether you like it or not, you either have Windows Defender, which is a lot better than it used to be, or you have other options that you have installed. Needless to say, they update at least once a day and are constantly scanning your computer. So guess what? You would even know you were infected. So that's another vector that you can actually calm yourself with. Google scans websites on a fairly routine amount of time, as well as having your computer scanning all the websites you're basically visiting. So if anything was infected on the internet, you would already know. Not to mention that businesses also pay to have their websites scanned or they actually took care and made sure that they used anti-code injection techniques to prevent people from installing code on their websites. Or they also use strong passwords and multi-factor authentication. You know, just the basics. Because we take the security of websites basically more seriously than they used to. So. Injecting code into websites, not possible. Infecting your computer, you would already know about it. And that password probably already changed. So here's the thing. The likelihood that a person getting an old password with an email, having the necessarily skills to infect a website in such a way to compromise a browser and have the operating system just allow you to run unsigned code is virtually impossible. And here is more proof to why what they're saying is impossible. This is Google Chrome. Most browsers have this. Any browser you're going to hear their name and recognize does have this. You go here, you have site settings, and in the site settings, 
you need permission for location, permission for camera, permission for microphone, and you go down here, permission to use other alternate USB devices. And here is another thing, unsunboxed plugin access requires permission. Yeah, you really turned on a camera and recorded people. People, I am de basically deconstructing this email and proving to you that it's not possible. And if you are especially paranoid, you can go into the start menu, click the gear icon, go to privacy, click the camera, click this off right here. You can go to the microphone, you click it off and you can go back and only turn it on when you need it. But guess what? Browsers are already doing this for you. There is no way for them to set up the code anyway in order to be able to run that camera. So I'm calling them liars. Obviously, don't be a victim of this kind of scam. Delete the email. Make sure your current passwords don't match. If they do, change them on every single website. Make sure you use services like LastPass and have unique passwords on every single website. Use multi-factor authentication. Make sure everything is up to date and you will be fine. And this kind of bullshit can be done by your six-year-old. So chances are you have nothing to worry about. And anyway, think about it. Who the hell has as much money as they claim people have? Just be safe and don't take everything seriously on the internet because that kind of scam is going to get a few people into a lot of financial trouble and chances are you know someone who would actually benefit from listening to this video. So like this episode if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, share with those that you think can benefit from this, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, email me at ask at tqaweekly.com or go to my website, tqaweekly.com for everything else where you can also become a member and enjoy these episodes two days in advance of everyone else. And if you want to help out this show, you go to tqaweekly.com slash support us and find seven ways to support this show. Thank you for watching and goodbye.